Hi, I'm Andrew with Flare, back again to show you how to brew with the Flare Signature. When it comes to the Flare product line, designed with portability in mind, this is our second most premium model. In addition to the custom carrying case and basic tools, this one comes with an integrated pressure gauge and an all-metal tamper. The Signature requires that you preheat your brewing cylinder for optimum results. While there is an optional preheat cap that you can purchase, we recommend you use this only when convenience is your number one priority. In fact, it's arguably less convenient to preheat this way than what I'll be demonstrating today. Our favorite method is to use the steam from the kettle we're boiling our water in. This small hack essentially requires you to look around the home or online for something that you can suspend the cylinder above the boiling water. Canning funnels, both metal and silicone, or even a small sifter or a colander will suffice. Set your kettle to boil, and get onto other things while your brewing cylinder gets up to temperature. With the exception of the flow control portafilter that comes standard on the Neo, all our portafilters are non-pressurized. This means you'll need a grinder that can not only grind fine enough to allow the coffee cake to be the mechanism that resists the flow and builds the pressure, but also comes with enough grind setting adjustments that you can fine tune your extraction to taste. 60 grind settings are the minimum we believe you'll need for the espresso method. When you first are starting out with your signature, we suggest starting with a dose around 15 grams and targeting a grind that is similar to the texture of sand that is both soft and gritty at the same time. Since we're brewing on an espresso maker that was built to travel, we recommend you pair it with a grinder that shares the same DNA. But if that's not reason enough, consider that you get more bang for your buck with a manual grinder. This is our Royal Grinder. And as you'd expect, it excels at espresso, but also serves up a good filter brew. If you're not already brewing with ratios and recipes, we highly recommend you do so. To that end, we recommend you brew with a scale so you can measure your input and output to ensure repeatable results. Today we'll be brewing with 15 grams of dry coffee and pulling to a yield of 36 to 37 grams out in around 40 seconds. This would be a one to 2.5 brewing ratio. The darker your coffee, the more likely you're going to enjoy it at ratios say closer to one to two or even less. Conversely, the lighter your coffee, the better the chances are you're going to enjoy it at approaching one to three. These are only suggestions and you should experiment to find out what works best for your coffee and your palate. All right, let's grind. With our two-in-one portafilter, you can choose to brew with or without the spout attached. We suggest you leave the spout attached until your coffee bed is holding pressure for about 40 seconds or more. Brewing with the spout removed, aka naked, lets you see how evenly the flow is across the entire filter screen, but it can result in a messy counter when the flow is too fast or uneven. If you're experiencing jets of coffee that spray outward and you're confident you've done a good job distributing and tamping the grounds, consider a finer grind if the shot is running fast and the flow lacks viscosity or coarser if you're noticing holes that the coffee isn't flowing from at the beginning of the shot. Also, sourcing fresher coffee can help here. Regardless of whether you're going to brew with or without the spout, just make sure it's not present when you go to tamp because if you do tamp with the force from above, you're gonna be pressing that spout in there. It's gonna be hard to get back out when you want to. So we'll leave that off, take our funnel, place it on top, We'll go ahead and transfer our grinds out of the cup and into the basket. You'll see that depending on your dose, your coffee might sit higher than the rim. So you wanna leave that funnel on until you've got the coffee settled down. You can move it aside, side to side like this, even do this. This is helping to distribute the coffee, but also compacting it a little bit to the point where I could remove the funnel if I wanted to. I'm also going to use a Weiss distribution technique today. So this is a very inexpensive tool you can make for a few dollars and it's just composed of some thin wires and then something to hold it. And the goal here is just to move the coffee grounds around a little bit better. It doesn't matter how good your coffee grinder is. It can almost always benefit from a little bit of this. And this is just making sure if there were any density issues going on with more coffee piled into one side or the other, when I transferred it over, um, or maybe if my grinder has a pretty wide distribution of smaller and larger particles around the target that I have, I'm incorporating everything back in, in the best that I can. So once I have that in a position where it's sitting below, I can take the funnel and remove that out. I'm going to take my tamper and I'm going to focus on a nice level tamp. And I'm more concerned about making sure I'm pressing down enough to compact the bed 
but I want to make sure that I'm also siding it and keeping this straight. If your tamper is on an angle like this, what's going to happen is you're going to have more compaction on one side or the other. And with that additional compaction to one side or the other, you're going to have water flowing easier or harder through either side. So it's more about how evenly and repeatable your tamp is, less about how hard. Press until you feel the table pressing back at you and that's generally all you need to do. After confirming a firm and level tamp, slide the screen on top. Going to be brewing with the spout, so we place that, place it in the holder. Go ahead and take our preheated cylinder, slide it on top. We're going to fill it right up until we see water getting into the well there. That way we know we're not leaving any air behind. Always better to have more water, even if it kind of moves into the well there, we can always displace it. Press the stem in. We're going to turn on our scale. I'm going to slow ramp into pressure. I'm going to try to reach into the espresso zone and just kind of hold it there. I like to place my arm across. I call this kind of an arm bar. And just hold it nice and steady so I'm not working too hard to pull the shot, especially considering the uh, direction that the flare is and where I'm standing here. This is easier. And then I'll be watching my scale and as I get closer to the 37 gram out target and also the time, I'll decide when and I'm about 10 to 15 grams close to uh, my target. I'm going to go ahead and let off the lever slowly just so that I make sure that the non-locking brew head will stay together because once you've pressurized the system, you can't quickly let off the lever. So I'm approaching 40 seconds now and I'm getting into about 37 grams. And I'm gonna go ahead and slowly back off. Now at this point, I stopped the lever before I actually pushed all the water through, so I've got some water in the chamber. I have a couple options here. The one I like the best is I like to pull out my espresso and swap it out with a purge cup. And this way I can go ahead and just press out the remaining water. So when I go to clean this brew head later, I won't have any hot water finding its way onto my hands. Other options with this is you can also remove the stem from the top like this, and we could dump this out into the sink or as I'm going to use a knock box. All right, so I have my knock box, and at this point I wanna make sure that before I go to separate these two, I'm gonna make sure that all the water is out. Looks like it is. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind. There could still be some water sitting above the coffee bed. Um, also when I pull these two apart, there's gonna be a little bit of suction, which will actually pull the puck of coffee out, and depending on how much suction, that could spill out on my hands and that sort of thing. So what I like to do is I like to flip it upside down like this, and that way I know as I pull these two apart like this, if this did come out, it's gonna end up there and contained. Also my screen generally ends up there as well, which is easier to then separate that out and get that out of the way. Um, and again, a knock box is a good thing to have because I wanna get that coffee out without scratching the basket um, or denting the, uh, the basket by hitting against something that's not meant to be hit against. So if you can make one of these, they're pretty cheap for like $10 or buy one. Give it a couple good knocks and it'll come out for you. At this point, if you're looking to pull another shot for a house or a flatmate, just go ahead and wipe out the grounds with a dry towel and start prepping the next shot. You can go ahead and use your dose cup at this point to reset the plunger back to the top so it's ready to go. You can go ahead and place it back on your kettle so it's preheating while you're working on prepping that shot. Like all flares, maintenance is next to none. Thanks to the patented removable brew head that provides you unfettered access to the complete brew path. Just a quick rinse under the sink after every use, leave it out to dry, and you can skip all the pesky back flushes, descales, and special cleaning powders that other machines require. It's also a good idea after every use to remove the spout if it was installed and rinse out the compartment below to keep coffee residue from building up there. Depending on the frequency of use, every month or so, you should remove the O-rings and wipe out any residue you find back behind there in the grooves. When doing so, take care not to use any sharp or pointed tools that might damage the O-rings. After you wipe the surfaces and the O-rings dry, apply a food grade lubricant or light flavorless cooking oil onto the rings to ensure the action on your next pull is just as nice and smooth as you remembered it. And there you go. That's brewing with the Flare Signature. If you wanna see what it's like to brew with one of our other models, select the corresponding thumbnails. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Happy brewing.